We know more and more about the mechanisms whereby our patients fail, um, uh, particularly abrucinib, where that's very well understood. Um, uh, Jennifer Wyash's group in, in, at Ohio State in particular ha have really done some very nice work demonstrating that a major mechanism of resistance to abrutinib is the emergence of resistance um, by a mutation at the binding pocket of the cysteine at four, the position 481 of BTK, which is responsible for the drug to bind irreversibly. Um, sh she has picked that up to be a major contributor towards the emergence of resistance. The mechanisms of resistance of idolelicib and rituximab really aren't clear, and so far no one's been able to demonstrate exactly you know, other mutations that arise whereby the, the cells become resistant. At the moment, um, I haven't seen any data on a published series of venetoclax patients who failed, although I know the samples are being collected to look at, is to identify exactly why that's occurring with um, venetoclax uh, monotherapy. Uh, and I think all of us would expect to see that with longer follow-up, as we have seen with the brucinib, in the, certainly in the previously treated patient population, that more patients are going to fail that therapy. And from the published series that we've seen so far with venetoclax, you know, the, the uh, continued relapse is occurring. I think it's for that reason that most of us believe that the future isn't going to be with monotherapy, but with combinations, so that you can try to prevent the emergence of those clones em emerging. And, and one would hope that by finding the right and optimal combination of, of drugs to add together, you would be able to really prevent resistance from occurring in the first place. So the addition of also having a deep res uh, response with um, having multiple agents acting together to prevent those emergent clones would be one step. The other thing is, of course, if you just consider that it's a chance event whereby a cell can mutate, the fewer cells you have in your body, the less the chance that mutation can occur. Again, a rationale for wanting to drive into a deep remission. So you could actually make the argument that emergence of resistance to venetoclax might be less common than uh, emergence of resistance to ibrutinib, just because we know that the depth of remissions are deeper with, with, uh, with that drug. But of course, only clinical trial data is going to help us answer that question.